So, Minecraft likes voxel-based worlds. Uh, they are all about exploring the world and carving it up, making it your own. That was never my favorite part. I always liked building bases and machines. I play in creative mode because I like to create acres and acres of stuff and create pistons and do all sorts of cool stuff. I don't actually need the voxels then, do I? All I need is something which understands how to build bases. So here is a room object. It's much smaller than it would be if it was voxels, um, and moreover, no matter how large I make it, it's the same size in memory. But because it understands that it's a room, I can do contextual editing. So here, for example, I can make it longer, and I can make it wider, I can make it shorter or taller. And these panels here on the walls, they understand that they're against a wall. They understand that these are walls, and I can change the nature of the wall. So I've just changed the whole wall over into a window. The room itself understands where its boundaries are, so when I tell it that uh, I would like to click here, it says you must want another room, in this case another hallway. Uh, later on you'll be able to build other kinds of rooms, but for now, it only knows hallways. And this follows the exact same rules. See? Now if we go back into this room and edit it, by clicking on the floor and pulling up the panels again, you see that there is a panel on that wall, and it understands that this is another wall. So, it puts a panel here too. Now, this same kind of contextual understanding applies to almost all of the game, in theory, so you can create an ob obnoxiously large base, and the characters you put in that base will be able to navigate through it, because they understand what the roles of each room are, and where the entrances and exits are. Um, You'll also be able to put stuff in the base, of course. Uh, not just rooms, but furniture in the rooms, and, of course, machines, because the whole game is about machines at heart. Um, although it has... I'm going to put people in it, because uh, there's no, no fun with just machines. This is a resource. You can build bases near resources and uh, soak up the resources, you know, siphon them off. Um, the resources are never-ending fonts, so a base is going to continue to be useful pretty much forever. And then you have these machines you'll need to build in order to refine the materials into uh, better materials which you can use to build better stuff in your base. Of course the materials are not located near each other, they're located all across the world. So you'd build bases ne next to every font and then you'd fire the resources from base to base. And you can even get into a kind of a multiplayer mode uh, in theory where you and your companions trade materials. Um, and the machines themselves are not delicate little toys. This is not a matter of building a room and then decorating it uh, with a computer. The machines produce a large amount of, uh, of secondary effects depending on the machine, such as heat and cold and motion. They've got stamping and conveyor belts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and because we can build these things as large as we would like, simply by, by expanding them, uh, huge factories can spring up. And you can end up uh, creating some of the most impressive work. Um, so that's basically it. The, uh, the core of the idea is you've got to build machines and places for people to work and the machines cause a lot of side effects, so you have to be careful how you build them. Um, you know, you may want to build something far underground just because otherwise it'll overheat and uh, make the base unlivable. Uh, or you may want to build heat sinks around it, even though the machine doesn't require them. Lots of stuff, uh, in theory. None of it's been built. I'm just talking out of my, out of my butt. But that's it just wanted to show you uh, what I'd been working on in the tech demo for a base construction tool.